ordered the Election Commission to increase the number of VVPAT physical verifications from one to five electronic voting machines per assembly segment. The EVMs will be selected randomly. The Apex Court passed its verdict after hearing a public interest litigation, which had sought verification of 50% of EVMs for each assembly segment. Well, to help us understand this issue, joining us now is T.S. Krishnamurti, the former Chief Election Commissioner. Uh, Mr. Krishnamurti, appreciate you joining us here. This is the Supreme Court saying go from one to five per assembly segment. Uh, of course, the PIL had sought 50% uh, significantly higher. Now, the process is that there is a technical committee that uh, was set up to look at this issue of VVPAT verification, and that committee pretty much went along with the Election Commission's view or the Election Commission's recommendations. Now, going from one to five, what will be the implications, sir? Well, first of all, I want to say that the EVMs by themselves, per se, is a credible uh, uh, mechanism. There is, uh, I don't think anybody should doubt the integrity of these machines. However, the PVPAT instrument was introduced to remove the apprehensions of some of the political parties about the possibility of manipulations. Hmm. Be that as it may, the Election Commission chose to have only one as a sample verification. Now that the political parties had, or the uh, petitioner has gone to the Supreme Court for uh, additional verification, they went up to 50% demand. But I think Supreme Court direction of five seems to be reasonable. I don't think um, the political parties should mm -hmm. get worried about it. And I don't think five may, will cause too much of a delay in um, announcing the result. Okay, so you're saying it won't cause too much of a delay because that was one of the concerns expressed by the Election Commission that this verification process will in fact delay uh, the counting right. process itself. But one of the other concerns that's been mentioned by the Election Commission in court, sir, is one of human error and possible mischief as well. Uh, you know, what do you make of that? And what exactly did the Election Commission say? I don't have that information. Did they say that there will be human errors? Yeah. There could be. They said that that is a concern that the Election Commission yeah, as, expressed as as to the I court, know. that there could be the possibility of human error and perhaps even mischief. You see, uh, in fact, when VVPAT was introduced, I said, is it a foolproof system? In my opinion, it is not. Because mm. a voter can always say, that I voted for X and the VV patch shows as Y. And so long as you don't have a CCTV in a polling station to see whether the voter's version is right or wrong. So these are possibilities which can arise. Mm. But we presume that the voter is always honest and is correct. And um, I, I, the whole human errors can take place, but I give it as a hardly uh, less than 1% chance. So let us believe that um, the voter mm -hmm. and the VV pad will give the right result. Yes, uh, that uh, we certainly hope so. Uh, political parties are, are uh, yet again likely to mount an appeal and go back to the Supreme Court, but you're saying that in your assessment this is fair uh, and, uh, and, and that this should be okay. Uh, I, I want to come back yeah. again to the EVM issue, sir. And, you know, we did an election town My, hall uh, recently with the current uh, election commissioner, Ashok Lavasa, and the former CEC, Mr. Sampat. And uh, their argument was that, look, the yeah. EVM is virtually a dumb machine. Uh, it is not connected to the internet, it is uh, battery operated, it's not even connected to power for instance. And so uh, the, the possibility of being able to hack an EVM uh, is very, very remote. In fact, almost impossible is the view of the Election Commission. Uh, separately, they also argued uh, that, uh, yeah. you know, the, the, the process of randomization, etc., uh, that, uh, that the Election Commission undertakes when putting these EVMs uh, across constituencies will make it very hard for any manipulation to take place. So what is your own assessment uh, on questions that are being raised with respect to the possible manipulation of EVMs? Now, as far as the EVMs are concerned, it is a standalone machine. Nobody can interfere with it. The chip in the EVM is burnt. It cannot be reprogrammed. There are enough safeguards in the machine, and there are mock trials before the polling takes place. If there are mistakes, you can replace it by another machine. But the machines can do not go wrong. There can be human mistakes, like you know, not operating it properly. But 
as far as the machines by themselves are concerned, I have always held the view on the basis of the reports received from technical experts that it cannot be manipulated. Mm. It is absolutely robust and credible. Cannot be manipulated, absolutely robust and credible. Before I let you go, and, sir, and there's been a lot of controversy. Uh, we, yes, go, go ahead, Mr. Krishna. Now, as far as the VV path is concerned, it is an additional intervention machine, which can, you know, there can be, for example, there can be a mismatch of one or two votes or three, four votes, because un unless and until the machine figure, suppose there is a difference of two or three votes difference between the machine and the VV pad, mm. then which will prevail? It has been decided that VV pad will prevail. Mm. So, but these things, small mistakes okay. by human errors can happen, but the machine cannot go wrong. Okay, so you're saying that you, in the case of a difference in count, the VVPAT count, the VVPAT count will will prevail. Uh, uh, yes, very uh, right. quickly, sir, before we let you go, I just we'll wanted to get your comments uh, on, uh, you know, that's right. Uh, on, on, you know, we, and we had this discussion last week as well on, on the uh, uh, violations as far as the code of uh, conduct are concerned. Uh, specifically, sir, on, on two issues where the Election Commission uh, has now issued statements. One, the politicization of defense forces. Uh, and two, yesterday we saw a statement being issued uh, on the use of uh, investigative agencies like the Income Tax Department, uh, the Enforcement Directorate, and so on and so forth. What have you made of the many controversies surrounding surrounding the election this time around and the manner in which the election commission has acted you see when we were when i was in the election commission normally the it raids were not asked for by the by the election commission but what i am told is that some of the it raids have been conducted because the election authorities got some information about stocking of money or distribution of money etc so if it is relatable to an election mm. offence, I think it would be well within its right to conduct mm. its rights. But if it is a roving inquiry, that it should be avoided during the election time. We, you asked me the other question about okay. this was about roving a, um, inquiries. Um, uh, model code of conduct. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's right, sir. That that is in, right. In uh, fact, well, there, um, there, was Shumuti, there was a question. Uh, there was a question. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay. No, there was a question about, you know, uh, the transfer of officials, etc. Yesterday I had mentioned that um, the political parties are only playing in p p participants in the election. You cannot obviously uh, go by what they say. If the election commission wants certain officials to be transferred, mm. it is, as per the Supreme Court mandate, it is well within its right. If uh, they have a grievance, they can certainly challenge it at the end of the elections. But... Um, uh, I had two or three cases when the chief ministers defied our directions and I told them that we will postpone the elections okay. indefinitely if they do not comply with the orders. So it is absolutely mandatory on the political personalities to comply with the election commission's yes. directions regarding posting a persons because election commission is the sole institution responsible under the constitution for conduct of free and fair in elections. Absolutely, uh, sir. Thank you very much for explaining all of those issues to us, uh, the importance of VVPAT verification, uh, also uh, what the Supreme Court has said and what this will mean now as far as the electoral process is concerned. The former Chief Election Commissioner, T.S. Krishnamurti, always a pleasure, sir. We'll take a